Good morning. <clears throat> Years ago, I sang in the junior choir here with some of these people. Margie Neer was the director, and she tuned me up to be a great singer. But today, you won't hear it, because I'm a different singer than I was yesterday. Um, so anyway, I won't be able to lead you, so you've got to your, lead yourselves today, okay? Um, it's good to be here. I'm glad I, uh, a year ago I moved from Lansing to North Muskegon. Seems a lot closer to drive here this morning. And um, even though I did, couldn't figure out where the center line was, <laughs> two weeks ago I bought a Meyer Chevrolet all-wheel drive. So Lord blessed me uh, real well. So it's good to be here. Do we have some announcements on behalf of the group? Today, any announcements? Yes. The bulletin on the giving tree says that December 11th, if you've taken a tag and you have a package, please have it back on the 9th so we have a chance to sort them and get them delivered to where they're going. So I'll have the bulletin changed for next week. Okay, other announcements, Jim? Okay, Mitchell Houseman. All right, yes. Uh, we got word yesterday that Roger's brother Robert was moved from Hill and Whitehall to the hospital because he had a kidney stone. Okay. Okay, Margaret, uh, there's a few of us that look like Hansons here today. Um, our cousin Margaret Knapp had surgery this morning on her back her lower back, and um, so it was supposed to be at 7.30. So um, continue to keep her then in your prayers. Others? As you know, I attend First Lutheran in Muskegon, so this part of the church service when we're remembering people needing prayers and so on is often quite long, and that's good. We keep people in our prayers. So I did mention there's a few Hansons here, some that could not be here. Um, we have a certain look about us. Uh, quite intelligent group, actually. Uh, uh, Christmas is coming by the outside, it looks like, and uh, it's good to be together with one another. So let's prepare for worship. I invite you to stand for confession. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who forgives all our sin, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. With sincere and repentant hearts, let us name our sins against Christ and with one another. Lord Jesus, judge of the nations, we confess that we have often failed to see your face among our neighbors in need. We have not always shared with the hungry or offered clothes to the destitute or shelter to the homeless. We have not always welcomed the stranger, nor we have visited prisoners. We have often not paid attention to these, your sisters and brothers, and in our neglect, we have failed to serve you. Lord, forgive us. Open our eyes to recognize your beloved family and give us the blessing of sincere repentance that we may know the joy of eternal life with you and all the saints in this world and in the world to come. Brothers and sisters, God seeks the lost sheep and feeds them with justice. 
Forgiven and freed, turn then and live in Christ, for through Christ our Lord we are forgiven. Our opening dialogue and prayer are in your bulletin. Worship Christ, eternal Son of God. Serve Christ, glorious ruler of creation. The Lord be with you. O God of power and might, your Son shows us the way of service, and in him we inherit the riches of your grace. Give us the wisdom to know what is right, and the strength to serve the world you have made. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. Good morning. Our first reading comes from Ezekiel, the 34th, 34th chapter. Thus says the Lord God, I myself will search for my sheep and will seek them out. As shepherds seek out their flocks when they are among their scattered sheep, so I will seek out my sheep. I will rescue them from all the places to which they have been scattered on a day of clouds and thick darkness. 
I will bring them out from the peoples and gather them from the countries and will bring them into their own land. And I will feed them on the mountains of Israel by the water courses and in all the inhabited parts of the land. I will feed them with good pasture and the mountain heights of Israel shall be their pasture. And there they shall lie down in good grazing land and they shall feed on rich pasture on the mountains of Israel. I myself will be the shepherd of my sheep, and I will make them lie down, says the Lord God. I will seek the lost, and I will bring back the strayed, and I will bind up the injured, and I will strengthen the weak. But the fat and the strong I will destroy. I will feed them with justice. Therefore, thus says the Lord to them, I myself will judge between the fat sheep and the lean sheep. Because you pushed with flank and shoulder and butted all, at all the weak animals with your horns until you scattered them far and wide. I will save my flock and they shall no longer be ravaged. And I will judge between sheep and sheep. I will set up over them one shepherd, my servant David, and he shall feed them. He shall feed them and be their shepherd, and I, the Lord, will be their God. And my servant David shall be prince among them. I, the Lord, have spoken. The word of the Lord.
Our second reading comes from Ephesians chapter 1. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints, and for this reason I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe, according to the working of his great power. God put his power to work in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places. Far above the rule and authority of the power and dominion and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the age to come. And he has put all things under his feet and has made him the head over all things for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. The word of the Lord. Please rise if you are able for the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew, chapter 25. When the Son of Man came, it comes in his glory, and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate people one from another, as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goat. And he will put the sheep at his right hand and the goats at the left. Then the king will say to those at the right hand, Come you that are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, you gave me food. I was thirsty, you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you welcomed me. I was naked and you gave me clothing. I was sick and you took care of me. I was in prison and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food or thirsty or gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them, truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. Then he will say to those at his left hand, You that are accursed, depart from me into the eternal fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty. You gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not welcome me. Naked, and you did not give me clothing. Sick and in prison, and you did not visit me. Then they also will answer, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and did not take care of you? Then he will answer them, truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. This is the gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. Are there children that come up for our children's message? All right, where do we sit? Do we sit or do we stand? Okay. Oh, my Lord, I may need help getting up. Okay, you know that I moved away from here 60 years ago. And I can still tell which family people are from by their faces. <laughs> you know, they're like a Michelson. You always know a Michelson face. There's one over there. And then some of my families here. 
and you can tell by their faces. We know the Mermo girls. They were all in the junior choir trying to help me sing, I think, many years ago. I want to just talk about faces. When you look at someone's face, what do you notice first? Anything you know? I mean, she has freckles. Those are good. That means you're very smart. Maybe your eyes, that's probably true. Um, your eyelashes, maybe. How about color of hair? Is that good? Like, he has beautiful hair. What if you have no hair? You notice that, too, sometimes, right? They're always so very intelligent people, people with no hair. Um, what else could I think about my face? Yeah, it changes. Because as your hair goes back, recedes, you get more forehead. <laughs> and your hair changes color. You notice by people's faces that they're getting older. Now I wanted to do that. I've never, I've never done a talk of any kind about people's faces. But I was thinking about it in the sermon today about faces. And how important it is for me to see faces. And um, faces mean that God has made us unique and different. Different kinds of sheep in the flock. We're all different. And that's one of the ways God blesses us. God blesses us through asking him to follow as different as we are and be a part of his flock, be a part of his people. So let's, this week... We sort of start a funny new year. It's called Advent. Let's be thinking about those in school and around us and how special each one is, even though they're different. Can we pray? Dear Lord Jesus, you have given us so many blessings through one another. These four young people belong to you. They are your children. And we would ask that you would bless them and each of us. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. Thank you. Ah, I did get up. Can we gather in prayer, please? Dear Lord Jesus, uh, we celebrate that you are our king. We are followers of yours. It's under your leadership that we serve. Bless our hearing this morning and our responses, that they would all be according to your will. In Jesus' name, amen. <clears throat> Today is Christ the King Sunday. So I calculated about 55 years ago when I became a pastor, there was no such thing as a Christ the King Sunday. Um, there was last day of the Trinity. We had gone through 26 Sundays, and half the year, and now we come to the end of the year, the last day of the Trinity. Then along the way, some wise people sitting around the table decided, well, it's really not after the Trinity, it's after Pentecost. 26 Sundays later, at the end of the year, we called it the last Sunday of Pentecost. Uh, we all knew that it was New Year's Eve. It was the end of the year. Because something different was going to happen with Advent and next week. It was kind of a New Year's Eve time to be together. And then we started walking closer and closer with our Roman Catholic sisters and brothers, and we got the very wise idea that we should call it what they call it, Christ the King Sunday. And that under the past year, we, we follow the King. Into the next year, we will follow the King. 
So we call it Christ the King Sunday. It has a little more meat to it than end of the year stuff, okay? So this is Christ the King Sunday. And then we have to ask ourselves, so who in the world chose this text about goats and sheep that it should be good for Christ the King Sunday? <clears throat> well, the way I was taught, there was a little table, probably all men, sitting around the table choosing pericope text. If you haven't ever heard that word, this is your word for the day. The pericope. It comes from the same root as periscope. When the submarine people decide to put the periscope out, they circled around to see what was out there. And the texts are chosen by circulating, circulating, no, circling, circling texts that seem to fit the right message for the Sunday. So this morning, Matthew 25, right at the end before the story of Holy Week and all that, uh, we get the last story from Jesus, um, the story about sheep and goats. I have to say, um, as, as my pastor now, Bill Utrecht in Muskegon, would say, it's pretty ag exaggerated. It's pretty um, dramatic. It's, it's got even a little mean streak in it. Basically asking people who followed Jesus, who are going to be followers of the Christ the King, about how their reaction or actions will be based on their following um, their Lord, the King. And what it seems to be important is what they act like towards other people. Well, it doesn't seem like it. It is important. What people act like toward other people. The little things, and maybe the big things, that you and I are a part of because we are followers of Christ the King. For example, we, we can, I, you could tell the story almost, is the way we treat Jesus is the way we treat those who don't have clothes, those who don't have food, those who are put in prison and have no visitors, um, those are all ways we can tell what it's like to be a follower of the king. The re I usually read the text I'm going to preach on at the beginning of the week, and I remember I read it this week and I said, well, we should worry about the little things, I think. And then I start thinking the number of times I've thought for my nine grandchildren when I hear some story about their life, I say, boy, they got to start worrying about the little things. And then as I've gotten older, older and older, I keep thinking, well, there aren't very many little things that really, really matter. Some of them certainly matter more than some. And maybe Jesus is trying to tell us it's really these big things that are part of your life that really matter. How you will be towards others. And often, others that have less than you do. Or more barriers around them than you do. So then I started thinking to myself, well, that's, that's kind of nebulous. These days of how in the world do we treat people different from us, and how am I going to get answers from all of you about how you've been doing on it? And so I decided I would tell two local stories based on my growing up in the Hanson family that may apply. First a positive and then a negative. A bad story, I should say. Um, the first story was about our cousin, um, Melva Johansson. Um, Norman and Dorothy Johansson lived right near Jack and Joe Ranch. I learned earlier this morning they went to, Melva went to Lawson School, and um, she was about my age. But what I remember is that she died of bone cancer about in her teen years. And what I remember is a Saturday. 
in which all the neighbors, the uncles, the grandpas, the boys my age went and brought their hay in. So I remember. I remember what it was like to be with these three generations of people who were doing something for someone else and what their faces looked like. Kind of an Amish picture of how much it meant to me at whatever, 14, 16, of being with these older men and the women cooking the meal in the house and what it felt like to see faces of people who were doing good for others. It's the faces I remember. During those same years, we lived at Stony Lake, uh, right by the bridge, by the swimming beach. I was dating June Kessler. In order to get home after a late date, I came along the shore by Camp Claybanks, and in the middle of the night, say one o'clock in the morning, for the record, one or two in the morning, I drove along uh, with my dad's international pickup with holes in the floor, um, and I came upon a neighbor who was known for being a drinker. He was stuck in the ditch. In the snowstorm, I got up close enough to see his face and know in my mind what people had said about him. And once I saw his face, I went home. I didn't help. So that's a face I remember. And another face I remember was the next morning. In our little front window at the house at Stony Lake, my dad, I gave him the big news that I had seen this man um, in, stuck in the ditch and went by, thinking that would mean a lot. It didn't. My dad looked at me and said, we don't do that. You should have stopped, Gary. And of all the faces I remember of my dad, that's one of them in which he was teaching his son a lesson that I was ready to hear. There's something about faces with episodes or interactions in our life that drive them deeper and make them speak to us uh, in a stronger, memorable way. And that's why those two stories, after reading this gospel, came to me. Well, I got some good news. I don't have to see face, people's faces anymore. I can be good to the prisoner. I can be good to the poor. I can be good to those who need some clothes by writing a check. I can do that. I can write a check to the Lutheran World Relief. I can bring food to a pantry. I can even sort the food at the pantry. I don't have to see people's faces. So I'm thinking about the end of a year, and I'm asking myself, Gary, in the next year, starting tomorrow, where can I put myself in places where I can see people's faces? Who needs a visit with a face attached? Not just a check, but where in my life do I need to have my ears and my face and my listening present? So that it gets deeper what it means to be faithful and even maybe take some risk now and then. So I was thinking more about me than about you, but it might apply to you too. Who are the people who could use a little stop from your face? A little visit from your grin or your words or your hug? Who is it that could stand a visit in Christ the King's name by you? 
Amen. Please join with me in praying the, the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father, the creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us turn our hearts to God, our breath and life, as we pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Holy God, from Christ we receive our call to feed, clothe, and welcome. Direct your church to respond to this call with faithfulness and generous love. We pray for the work of ELCA World Hunger and Partnerships with Global Feeding Ministries. Hear us, O oh God. In Christ, the rock of our salvation, we are brought into union with all of creation. With mountains, seas, dry lands, and animals of the field, we seek your guidance and protection. Hear us, O oh God. In Christ, we know merciful judgment guide rulers of every nation in ways of humble leadership and wise decision-making, allow aid to come to all who are underserved and care to any who are neglected. Hear us, O God. In Christ, we feel the depth of your love and care toward us. Nourish all who hunger, connect any who are isolated, 
and surround all who experience rejection or abuse. We pray for Sally and Bob, Mary and Mary, Pat and Mitchell and Linda and Bob, Carly, David and Roger. We pray for Joanne and Pastor Sarah. We pray for Angie and Pastor Chris. We pray for Justine and baby Daylin. We pray for Audrey and Jim and Mark. We pray for Aaron and Barb. We also pray for Darina and Norris. We pray for Shelley and Ken. Hear us, O oh God. In Christ, we are made the people of his pasture. Inspire the outreach and social ministries of this congregation. We pray for all people who serve and attend the needs of others. Hear us, O oh God. We pray for those who are in our services. We pray for Jake and Nick and Max. Hear us, O oh God. Holy God, in Christ, we are welcomed home. We praise you for the faithfulness, faithful witness of those who have served you and extended your welcome and love to us. Unite us with them as one body of Christ. Hear us, O oh God. We offer our spoken prayers and those held in our hearts, trusting in your mercy, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Let us share that peace with one another.
God of all goodness. Generations have turned to you, gathered around your table, and shared your abundant blessings. Number, Number among them. As we gather these gifts from your abundance and give thanks for your rich blessings, we may feast upon your sin and care for all that you have made through Christ our sovereign and servant. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God. Through our Lord, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, and on this day overcame death and the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened the way of everlasting life. And so with the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join in their unending hymn. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord, Lord of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. With a genuine faith, let us pray as Christ has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. There is a place for you at the banquet. Come and feast at Jesus' table. Thanks be to God. Oh yeah, that's right. I take this. I go down the middle.
as you are able. <coughs> Body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, in this simple meal, you have set a banquet. Sustain us on the journey, strengthen us to care for the least of your beloved children, and give us glad and generous hearts as we meet you on the way. Amen. First of all, it's really good to be here. Uh, feels like home. Um, so thank you for inviting me, and um, I continue to keep you all in Pastor Sarah in my prayers. Drive safely today. Um, look out for the other driver. That's what I tell them. <laughs> May the God of all creation, in whose image we are made, who claims us and calls us beloved, who strengthens us for service, give you reason to rejoice and be glad. The blessing of Almighty God, Sovereign Savior, 